Hello, this is Mike Lyman from Northern Kentucky University, and we're going to start our next part of the part three of Yahoo Maps series. And if you recall, last time we turned some very ugly black looking markers into some funky uh, pink looking markers here. And we're going to try to take this a little further today. We're going to uh, add a unique icon. Uh, we're going to add that image to the XML and turn it into a button where we can search latitude and longitude when we click on that button. Let's get to that. I had my graphic designer produce a few uh, images for me. And let's just copy and paste those into uh, our project. So I'm just going to copy these images right here. Great thing about Flex is you can just copy and paste directly in a folder. I find that a great time saver. So let's go, go to our project. Here's our Flex project. And we have an images folder with one little uh, dot splat. Let's go ahead and paste our images in there. Now we have our A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on pings, and we need to put those into the XML so we can call those into the program. So let's close that folder and go to the XML folder. And here's my XML right here, and we want to insert those tags. So I'm just going to do that at the beginning. And I'll just create a whole new tag, and I'll put a bubble, or my bubble, my bub. That's good. And we're going to close that. with my bub. And this is actually an initial image that I'm not going to use, but I can go ahead and give it an image name. We'll say image uh, ping. Of course, the rest of the images are images I am going to use. This is the initial uh, coordinate that brings me to the center map of Covington, and then the other coordinates are the actual uh, places on the maps. Let's go ahead and uh, use those images now. And we want to use the my bub, so I'm going to come back here and grab uh, the entire tag here. Go to the next XML piece, right here, and add it in. And that tag, let's go back and take a look at our data, is called a.ping. So let's go and put that in. And you can copy that. And go down to the next tag, next part of your XML, this next chunk, which starts with my data here, and put the next one in. We'll call that B. And then go down and put the next one in. And we'll call that C. And so on. I'm going to pause this, finish this up, and return when it's done. OK, for the rest of my data, I put the last tag in. That's the e.ping tag. We've got the XML done. We'll go ahead and save that if you'd like. And then we'll go back to the Yahoo Maps and put that in the uh, program. So we're back in Flex, and we need to navigate down to about line 80. I'm not sure where it is on your program, but it's about line 80 on mine. And you can see this marker, new custom marker, is bringing in an image from the images folder called dot underscore splat. I actually want to bring in uh, the right um, image. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underscore. We're actually going to bring that in for my array collection. And if you recall the name of my array collection, let's go back up to the top is AC video. So let's come along here, take that array collection, and uh, it will be coming from the images folder, so I need to add the images uh, tag to it. I can just hit a plus sign, and come along here and uh, just type in AC videos. I dot and whatever the name of that XML piece is, let's bring it for XML and that's called my bub. I can just copy that and come back to our Yahoo Maps and put in my bub. And now let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. And so now when you look at my uh, map, I definitely am getting those distinct images. Boy, wasn't that really easy. It sure was. And now we actually want to turn those into clickable buttons that take us to that longitude and latitude position. So at this point in the program, we want to actually make these buttons interactive. So let's do that. We're back in the Flex code. Now I'm going to go to the custom marker class now. And let's double click on that. 
and we're going to add in a drop shadow uh, package. So let's import the drop shadow filter. And we need to come down here and look at some of these variables. We have a URL string. Uh, that underscore URL uh, is not significant. It could be any name. They just, in this particular instance, called it URL. And we have the loader class. Now, what does the loader class do? What it loads display objects. And so we're going to use that in the sense it's used to load the display object. We're going to go to that and we're going to actually uh, put in an interactive button. So let's move down to the INI. And in the INI, we see that we have a new loader created. And that loader has a complete event, and that loader brings in the URL string that we saw earlier. And we're going to open this up, and we're going to make it interactive by adding an interactive mouth listener. We're actually adding three listeners. And I have the code right here. We're going to add a mouse over, a mouse out, and a mouse up. So let me go ahead and copy this code right here. And let's just paste it in. And so what's going to happen is, is when we roll over our button, the uh, mouse over state will be fired. And when we roll out, the mouse out state will be fired. And when we're up, the mouse up state will be fired. Let's go ahead and paste that code in. So we just go down into our methods in our class. And we find some place and we paste in our classes. We'll just go down to the bottom. And I have my classes already written out. So let me bring up that text file. So let me come down here. And in my text file, I have my mouse over state that basically keeps it at scale 1. And I have my uh, mouse up state, which takes me to the mouse out state. Now, we're going to use that mouse up state uh, further on for other things. So it's just a container right now, in a sense. And here in my mouse out state, we have the scale being shrunk to 0.9. And we see that shadow event at 4. And let's go ahead and grab these three functions right here. Come down here. And let's just paste them into our code. So this is really very easy to do. It's just kind of a linear process. Nothing fancy here. Just a note here on this mouse overstate, you do see the introduction of this drop shadow filter, which we uh, imported earlier in this uh, discussion. So now that it's done, let's save it and see if we get any errors. You always get errors. So let's go ahead and run this and cross our fingers and see what happens. And we have an error, so let's go fix that. So we're back in the custom marker class, and we see we indeed do have three errors. Let's roll over one and see what it is. And it says an undefined mouse event. So we forgot to put, import the mouse event package, so let's go back to the import statement. Let's go and paste in that uh, mouse event package right there. And now let's run the program. And we see that we do have our uh, buttons now, but when we roll over, a shadow does appear, and roll off, it doesn't. But that initial shadow is not on the button, and that's a little bit disturbing. When I roll over and roll off, it leaves the shadow behind. And what I want to happen is that shadow to be initially there, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we're back in the custom marker class, and we want to add uh, a drop shadow uh, to the uh, program initially so it doesn't surprise us when we roll over it. And you can see it at the... Uh, initiation function there's this loader and uh, there's this handle load complete and so when it loads we want to add that drop shadow in that function so let's go ahead and go down and find that function so what we want to do is go ahead and go down to the handle load complete function and add in the uh, drop shadow component let's go ahead and go down and let's find that handle load complete function it should be here somewhere and there it is right there Let's go ahead and add in our drop shadow component. And there we go, load the filters, and there's the drop shadow filter. If you want to learn more about this, go into the help uh, section and look up uh, drop shadow filters, and you'll learn everything we need to know about that. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it runs well. We'll go back to the program and click on it and run, and let's see what happens. And we can see now that we have that initial drop shadow on our button, so it's not surprising us when you roll over. There's an enhanced drop shadow, and the button actually increases in size, and you roll off, and the shadow goes away. So there you go. You're, you now have the ability to actually have a clickable button. And I'm going to show that to you real quick. If you go back to the uh, custom marker, we've set up the uh, whole mechanism for having that clickable button, and that's on the over and the up and the out states, and we're going to address that next time.